morning, everyone. Thanks for your terrific uh, turnout this morning. Hope you are enjoying this trip. Uh, long before coming to this trip, I was just thinking, oh, well, what I'm going to uh, present to these people, for example, I didn't know Jane and John were coming, but I knew Barbara and Ricky and Mark, of course, and I said to myself, all oh, those guys know my, my presentation already. They will be just like, ah, oh, I know that. But uh, uh, as, as you will see in my presentation, and I, since I didn't know Jane and John were coming, I put some, a few pictures of you. I wasn't aware that you were coming, so I think you will be happy for this. Uh, we didn't give permission. You didn't? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I was just wondering, well, what's the title of this presentation? It just, uh, and I thought, well, it's been uh, nine years now, but the pandemic, of course, uh, stopped us from being, you know, doing more and more trips. And I said, well, natural trips to Cuba, nine years on. That's what I thought. And I think this are new things for you, for Barbara and the others. And uh, it goes like this. We started our trips back in uh, uh, April uh, 2011, uh, and, and then 2012, and uh, mainly for conservation purposes. And I am amazed that after all these years, God, we have almost been in all, all of the provinces of Cuba, you know? Of 15 provinces, we have been in 12, of course. We have not, uh, you know, been uh, able to cover all the areas in one province, but, uh, you know, from from the, uh, from Guanacabibes to uh, my sea, uh, sorry. We have been in most of the provinces now looking for bottle flies. And uh, even though we concentrated our efforts in the easternmost part of, the, of Cuba, now we are getting back to uh, the western part too. So, uh, which is good too. Here I show you uh, roughly the, uh, the, more, the four most uh, richest areas from the four uh, most rich areas, in, or the richest area of Cuba. And uh, now, or one of them is the Guanacabibes Peninsula. We were all there, even though we didn't find so many butterflies. And the three main mountain ranges, Guaniguanico, uh, where we were, the central part of Cuba, and a, uh, in the uh, eastern part of Cuba, too. So, this is for you to know uh, the richest areas for butterflies and uh, biodiversity in Cuba. The total epidopter of Cuba, which is uh, one, one number that everyone wants to know, is some uh, thousand and six hundred species, but that number will change in just the near future. Of these, uh, 200 are butterflies, true butterflies, the other are not. And the endemic, which in a total number are 78, but only 42 species are strict endemic to Cuba. And uh, it's a good number. Here are the most iconic Cuban endemic butterflies. The uh, Gunga Solotail in the Solotail family and the Orange Wash Sulfur in the Sulfur family. Parides Mulakianus and Phoebe Zawayamero. Parides Mulakianus only, uh, is only found in the stream east of the island and in the west, in two different races or subspecies. Uh, uh, the orange wash sulfur is more, uh, more distributed uh, than the, uh, the Gunda swallowtail, but anyway, it's a beautiful. Actually, this is the male butterfly. The female looks like other uh, female soldiers that we may have. And uh, you will see here the Gondlak solitaire in action, taking nectar on an antenna flower uh, back in my area, uh, Villa. 
Yeah. Is it a beautiful butterfly? Yes. Have you ever seen it? Yes, we saw yeah, it. Uh, the, the mountain was full of them when we were in Maya. So, I was able to add this video as part of my learning, making PDF, I mean, uh, presentations. And uh, as a result, the main results that we have ever uh, you know, had on these trips. For example, uh, this butterfly here, the Mexican uh, sailor, which we all saw it in Soroa or uh, Las Terrazas. Now, here's the male specimen, here's the female. So you can see that they are very different. But during our time, we have been able to see how this once common butterfly in the extreme western of the island has spread all over the, the country. And so in, in nine years, we have been able to record it in many other provinces, even in Camagüey, where I live, and the rest of the province. So I think it's, a, it, it's an event that no, no, not everybody can see in a lifetime. You know, some people say, yeah, it used to be a commoner, and now it has spread all over the, the, the country. But in our time, in our trips, we have been able to, to see that. Uh, so is it an immigrant from Mexico then? It seems to be. It seems to be. And that explains why it starts but in the it, west and then it spread east. Yeah, I, it took a while for the butterfly to do that, but mm -hmm. we have seen it. Uh -huh. And uh, the same with this uh, exotic swallowtail, which is coming from Asia, somewhere. And it reached the, uh, the, the antioles. And it has spread all over the, 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 I mean, the island. And we have also, uh, we have uh, been also uh, able to see the, uh, the, how it moves through the, uh, the entire island. It, uh, it is supposed to be a, a pest, a citrus pest in Asia, but not in Cuba. And now you have in Florida too, as Mark uh, told me. What's but, the name uh, lime, lime, swallowtail. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as another result of our trips, the finding of new host plants for rare butterflies, the caterpillars. The caterpillars that you are seeing here, some of them are completely new to uh, science. I mean, and uh, most of this of them are skippers. But uh, it's very interesting because uh, some of them are endemic, uh, which have been all you know all the time. Has been very rare to find them, even the adults. And uh, I think in nine years, it could be more. I think right, but uh, we're still working on it. And I think in this trip we were able to find two more species that. Uh, we didn't know uh, where to find them or the caterpillars and so on. Publications. As part of our scientific activity, well, we published uh, some things and we were able to publish brochures that you all have maybe from Artemisa and Cienfuegos. Um, and now we have amounted five uh, scientific publications. Mark and I, and we also have uh, co authored other publications and uh, with other authors, and we have contributed mm -hmm. with specimen for DNA uh, tests and uh, distribution of record, host plant records, pictures for. So, Mark and I have cont long contributed for that, and we are this is the uh, result of these trips. Um, this is one of the main results of our trip. Mark found this endemic butterfly back in Mayavi in the, in the east of the island, which turned out to be a new species for science. But not only that, in a whole uh, group of black butterflies, well, you know, Callistos, Herophili, you know, the, black, the, the, the common Callisto. But this is one of the most striking species because it has some features that the other doesn't have, like the uh, white banding and uh, most beautiful. So it was named after Caroline Sharkey, in honor honoring her. And it's, not, it's yeah, because uh, the Tree Institute, you know, has uh -huh. helped uh, all of us to uh, do our conservation uh, work here in Cuba. 
Fear is the habitat, you know, the type locality for that new butterfly to science. And you can see in the map the green area where it may occur, of course. It's not the exact point of location, but you can see that it inhabits the, uh, the east part of the island. So I habitat or shark is called to Mesura Piloto is a national park. I have to say that this area was uh, in flames many, many months ago, and probably this area had suffered the impact of, of wildfire that lasted for several, several days. And uh, the Mesura Hill, where we have been there, and it, it, it all burned. And we don't know how, how it uh, looked like uh, these days. One of the most striking things that I saw when I met Mark in, back in 2012 was we, we stayed together at Soroa in a house there. Mark probably told you about finding a witch moth flying around and he, was, he thought it was a bat. But the other thing I recall was Mark was really impressed with this uh, click beetle. Click beetles are maybe like this, two inches, or there are other species more, much smaller. But it has two uh, 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 lights, like a firefly. And Mark was so impressed, and I was, you know, delighted to see him, you know, recording on, on that insect that we all are accustomed to see here. So I, uh, as part of our experience, I just wanted to mention this. Because we saw those at Las Carazas on the Owl Walk. You saw them the again, you saw them around. again, so I... The Cocuyo Cocuyo, yes. Mark was so delighted to... Oh, this? This was from my, my backyard, actually. I, that time I, I couldn't... Uh, but Pat probably has the video of, the, of that time. So uh, when you put them upside down, they do that click, and they uh, just come up. So uh, I dedicated this session to you know to honor uh, people that have uh, uh, accompanied us and feel and help find, uh, to to help us in our trips. And this photo is of Dr. Marmeno in Calicoco with A. G. Spitzer, uh, former student in biology sciences, and. Uh, we had a great time with that, that boy at that time. Here is at Pinar, Pinares de Mayari Olguin. Here is Barbara, which is now a veteran of our trips. She probably come uh, every trip. And with uh, Miriam, uh, well, it's just a, uh, it's just a section to, you know, to remember those people that has helped us to, to do what, I, what we do. And here, with the American flag, there is a very uh, uh, special guy, you know, his uh, uh, cousins, Matt, 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 Matt cousins. cousins from North Carolina or mm -hmm. South Carolina. North Carolina. He came here, but he, he, he knew, uh, he loves butterflies, he loves shooting, he loves uh, uh, stones, geology, but also the Cuban history. He probably knows more Cuban history than I. And uh, when we were in Santiago de Cuba, in the east of the, of, of the country, he, uh, he knew of a place known San Juan Hill, that I didn't know of, that was a final battle between American, Cuban, and, and, Spanish, and Spaniards. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the war ended. I mean, the, the, that final and crucial battle that Americans helped to, uh, uh, to win it. So, he had this flag here, and here is a plate in English that you can <coughs> will be able to read, and that's uh, all the history about that what happened in that. Uh, he bought pizza. He bought a pizza. <laughs> yeah. He used to be a pizza uh, deliverer. Deliver. I didn't know John and Jay were coming, but. <laughs> It's a way to thank, thank, thank them for their support. And uh, this is from Yabason Lookout. Remember, a very uh, stony uh, road. And this is our guy, Jose, from Guadalajara. He's one of the best, the best <laughs> guys. He's okay. a crazy dude, but it's, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. So here is Jane and John. And 
I, I wanted to show uh, in this picture what this is me here and Mark and Jose. And I want to show Melissa, like, because she also uh, was with us in that trip, just for very brief, uh, only briefly. And again, uh, Barbara, and they did all here and Jane in the first place. That was in, and this picture is John Lampkin's photo. Thank you for the credit. <laughs> right? This is your picture. So I, I, I had to. Uh, I'm glad you had uh, any use for it. And I, 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 I credit it. Not from Mirador de Mayabe Holguin. In. And here was our, I think, our last trip in 2019, I think. 18. 18? Yeah, right. You're right. right. And. Uh, well, here are the uh, Duncan and uh, what's the name of his mother? Uh, Julie, Julie, Duncan's mother. Julie, was it? Julie, Julie, yeah. and his mom, Barbara, and Rick. Okay. At, at the highest waterfall in Cuba. At the highest oh. waterfall, Salto del Guayabo. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well. In our trips, we take pictures of everything, and I want also to show you not only butterflies and other things, but this this uh, one of the most wanted uh, species of bird that you have uh, wanted to see in the trip. This is a blue-headed quail dog. This, I, I took this picture in one place that will probably go in November in Zapata Swamp, right? Yeah. I was just around the, ki the, the, the kitchen of that place, and then you see. Uh, Back, back of the kitchen, there was a beautiful blue headed quail dog. And just take, I took this just rough picture just to show you that we also uh, record many other things in our trips. A Cuban parrot from, from Matanzas, you, uh, which is a very, uh, it's not an endemic, but it's a very beautiful bird. Uh, uh, and a Cuban racer, I think, if anybody can correct me the identification, I will be pleased to listen to you. I, I, I photograph this in, in Cayococ, in Cielo de Avila province. And this one of the smallest uh, frogs in the, uh, I, mean, I would say the north, in the north hemisphere. And uh, it was from Iberia, in the extremist of the islands. As you can see, this is my hand. You can see the size of this little. Uh, mm. uh, his name is uh, Monte Iberia Dwarf Frog. <laughs> so the name tells the story. And I was reading a little bit about this little guy here, and that it turns out that it has some uh, poison or some toxins on, on the skin. So that's why, you know, I, I had no troubles at that time, but maybe you have to be careful to be touching those little, little dudes. And uh, the Cuban painting snail, one of the endemic land snail, one of the most beautiful around the world. Uh, they come in variations of, you know, shells and beautiful colors. And I think it's one of the most beautiful uh, land snail in the world. And uh, so, that's all for that's all I have. All I have to do. Thank you. Bravo, bravo, bravo. So thank you, both of you. I mean all of you for being here, for supporting our work. Okay. That's it.